So first thing we're going to talk about is results. I want you to guys to really understand this. So blank happens when you achieve blank. Okay. You guessed it. Results happen when you achieve your ding, ding, ding goals. Now goals are behavior, correct? Uh, they're behavior based. So now a lot of people say that they want to lose 20 pounds. Now 20 pounds is a result. Losing 20 pounds is a result. Now, our objective here is to set goals that are going to lead you to losing 20 pounds. We'll talk about that in a second, but you need to understand uh, this process. So, we're going to track your body composition every week. And in our culture, in our brand, and what we do for Fuse Fitness Coaching is we do it at least once a month with you. And I'm going to back up one notch here. So, <clears throat> now if we look at September 18th, this person weighed 238 pounds, their body fat was at 41.3. Their lean mass was at 139.8. You guys with me? Now, that is, I'm gonna silence my phone here. Uh, that's just a benchmark, okay? So every month, as you can see, we're checking in. So the next check-in, body fat went down to 36, lean mass went up to 144, beautiful. Uh, second check-in, lost body fat again, lean tissue went up again. However, let's highlight that, that uh, third check-in, lean mass, actually went down that's a problem okay so that just shows that if people that are trying to lose weight oftentimes will lose lean mass okay now our program is focused on losing fat and building lean mass so it's not weight loss it's fat loss big difference so in this case uh, the situation this person was eating about 1580 calories as you can see that's the average we bumped up the calories by 300 to get, her, to get their metabolism to go in the right direction. Okay, a lot of people think that they need to continue to, to eat less and move more to get their metabolism to run right, and that's not, not always the case. Off, more often than not, it's not the case. So you're gonna learn about that. Uh, so you should understand fat loss versus weight loss. We talked about that. The scale doesn't tell the entire story because the scale doesn't tell you your your uh, fat mass, your, your body composition, or your lean mass, okay? You should win every single month. Now, in this challenge, you're probably gonna, on average, you're gonna you lose about 5% of body fat uh, in this six-week challenge, okay? Um, lean mass is a 10% gain on average, so expect when you start putting together the results, that's what you should see in this six-week challenge. Now the scoreboard, like I said, the root of what we're trying to help you guys do in, in, in the physiological change your body should have is an increase in lean tissue or muscle and a decrease in fat. Okay, so if your program is not delivering that for you, if you're not increasing lean tissue and burning fat, that means we gotta change something. If, if you don't change, you don't change. Here's what we need to change, okay? This is in fact the do angle of change. And uh, notice it's not a typo, it's a do angle and uh, not a triangle because these are things we do. Here's what it's comprised of. We have nutrition, exercise, supplements. These three things is, are, are, are the different goals that we help you set. So like I said, goals are behavior based. If you achieve goals underneath these three categories, your goals, you're gonna see a decrease in, in fat and increase in lean tissue. Right, your metabolism is going to go up. You're going to have more strength. You're going to have more energy. Vitality and movement uh, is also part of that. So a lot of us, um, it's, some people want to be able to move better and enjoy retirement, or uh, you know, get down to the ground and play with their kids or grandkids and like have like energy like that. Um, and when you're able to do those things, it's measurable. Okay, so it's it's things that we can measure and game plan for. So uh, this is our primary focus on when we go through the different categories, we're gonna start with nutrition, and I'm gonna talk about issues that people have with it. And you you may relate to some of those things, okay? Maybe not, maybe you're a rock star with nutrition. Um, maybe your, your opportunity is exercise, okay? Or maybe it's supplementation. So some people, um, what they need to start with is exercise, okay? It just depends on where you're at. Some people just, they say, hey, don't talk to me about nutrition yet, I just need to start moving. Let me start moving first, and many times when you start moving and start exercising, that will, uh, uh, change. You, you will, it'll change the way you think. You'll start thinking different outside of that. So therefore you'll start changing some nutrition behaviors and then uh, supplements. So some people start with exercise and movement and then they, they, then they, then they go to supplements because sometimes supplements can change the way you think. 
Okay. They can change how your body reacts to the food you eat. For example, many people are over, they, they are undernourished, but they overconsume. So they overeat calories, but they are undernourished from a nutrition standpoint. Okay. Now simply adding the proper nourishment and having proper micronutrients and vitamins and minerals and things like that in your body to help your body run properly, you'll start making better nutrition decisions because your body's not continuing to create calories. That's just one example. So um, you'll find where you're at and everybody has a different plan. So there's, we have a couple hundred people that train with us. There's a, there's a few hundred different plans. So everybody's in different spot. So just know that find something for you and um, set plans around it and do it. Don't just try it. Do it. See, it says do angle right over in the corner over there. So nutrition is the first stop. Uh, now there's three issues, issues or problems that I, I feel a lot of people have. So we're going to go after these. So some of the issues that people have are number one, they are not sufficient with their micronutrient consumption. We'll talk about what that is. People aren't sufficient or smart about macronutrient consumption either. Number three, sometimes folks have issues with digestive health. Okay. And we'll talk about all three of these things in some detail and I'm thinking that most of you can relate to at least one or two of these things, maybe all of them. Um, if, if you don't relate to them, maybe you know somebody that does. Send them this message. All right, so micronutrients are um, the, the chemical level of a lot of the foods that we eat. Um, they're vitamins, they're minerals, they're, they're, they're things that we know that are, are vital for health. And I feel, and it's not just my feelings, I got, I got stats and science to show you this, that people, people jack this up. People don't do it right. They don't think about it. So... I believe, and we believe at Fuse Fitness Coaching is the best way to um, to be healthy is to solve this micronutrient problem, okay? And it's simply because, one of my favorite sayings, a chain is no stronger than its weakest link in life. After all, it's a chain. And literally, if, if uh, you may stunt your metabolic um, capacity by having uh, poor micronutrient decisions, okay? And we'll talk more about that here in a second. So um, that, that may stunt your your growth from a metabolic standpoint. So uh, to help you get your head wrapped around micronutrients, I'm gonna talk about the Krebs cycle. It's a fancy uh, diagram here. You don't need to know this, but what you do need to know is the Krebs cycle is a key pathway for cellular energy. It, it absolutely uses micronutrients. And this is just one metabolic pathway. So let's dive into this a little bit. So if you look at the top, uh, choline, for example, is necessary, okay, uh, for your body to make acetylcholine. Now, choline is something that you consume. If you don't consume enough choline, it's hard to make acetylcholine, and it's hard for your Krebs cycle to, to, to function properly, along with a lot of, a lot of B, uh, B vitamins that you see highlighted. Okay, so if you're deficient in some of these micronutrients, the Krebs cycle has a hard time operating properly. If the Krebs cycle has a hard time operating properly, your cells have uh, may, may lack energy. So your, your, your body's ability to have cellular energy uh, may not be as efficient. Okay. And that's a problem. Okay. And again, this is just one pathway. So to give you a bigger picture, this is the metabolic pathway of life. All right. So I'll hold this slide. If you guys want to jot this down, I'll uh, give you a second to, to do that. Um, just kidding. This is, it's overly complicated and it's nuts. Okay. So life's complicated. There's no doubt that your metabolism is requires a lot of things to get going. So it's, it's important to really think about this concept. So I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into actually talking about some guidelines here. So this is a chart from uh, uh, the 2015 Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committee uh, brought to you by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. It's, it's on the shortfall of nutrients that uh, Americans have. Um, this is, this chart's kind of, I'll talk you through it. It's not super simple to understand, but it's percentage of less than estimated average requirements. Okay. This is, it's, so it's not, so potassium, for example, most people are 97% less than the estimated average requirements. And notice I said average requirements. Um, personally, I don't wanna be average. I would uh, prefer to be optimal. I don't know about you. So hopefully you're like me, you don't wanna go average, you'd rather be optimal. Um, and, and looking down, down the list here, so 95% uh, less than estimated average requirements of fiber. Vitamin D, same thing, choline, we just talked about that for the Krebs cycle. Uh, this is not good for you or your metabolism. So you may wonder why you don't feel super good because you may be deficient in some of these things and um we have some simple fixes for you so now just to frame this up a little bit better so potassium is a mineral that's critical for life it's necessary for the heart kidneys and other organs to work normally okay um we need potassium fiber allows you to eliminate toxins and absorb vital nutrients from food vitamin d deficiency is linked to a lot of issues that people may have 
Okay. And that's just the top three. Um, that are, there are just a few of them here that to, to get into it, but we, we just know that there's, there's simple fixes to this and which we'll talk about. Um, now I'm going to start getting into some solutions here. So this is a, a chart that talks about, uh, where people are actually getting their, uh, nutrients from. So there's a few different ways to do it. You can get it from food, right? So eating food, which is, you need to eat food, no doubt. Um, some foods are fortified with micronutrients like, uh, uh, orange juice, for example, oftentimes will fortify with uh, vitamin D and calcium. Uh, a lot of cereals are fortified. And uh, um, also the third thing would be supplements. So actually taking a multivitamin. So those are the, the three different ways. And the, the black bar is just food. The white bar is fortified foods with food. And then the last one, the gray bar is uh, food and supplements. So as you can see, vitamin A, for example, 75% uh, below estimated average requirements for vitamin A. Uh, vitamin C, that, that's for people that just eat just food and depend on food only for micronutrients. White is the fortified uh, folks. They're about 45% less than average requirements. And then A, vitamin A for folks that actually take supplements, they're still below estimated average requirements and they're taking a multivitamin. Okay. And you can see the trend going to the right there that, you know, we, we have some issues with it. This is just data that I pulled from the Journal of Nutrition. So just, uh, just something to think about. Um, again, maybe this isn't you. Maybe you know somebody. Now, uh, uh, so that's micronutrients. So I'll talk more solution about that. So obviously this is pointing to um, the people that are taking supplements are less deficient. So we'll talk about that in a second, but first we're gonna dive into micronutrients or uh, macronutrients. Macronutrients are bigger, right? So micro, little, macro, big. Macro is carbs, fat, and protein. We're gonna talk about how your body responds different to those. And you may have an issue with this, maybe not. Um, however, somebody in your team might have an issue with that and we need to have a little, little talk with them if they do. So to understand macros, the best way to understand that is to understand uh, the blood sugar craving roller coaster. This is one of my favorite talks because it really gets you to kind of open up to what happens when you consume food. So uh, let me let me start by bringing you through a uh, uh, a potential bad example here. Okay, so let's say uh, uh, Bill wakes up in the morning and he has oatmeal, uh, a glass of orange juice, and a banana. Okay, all those things are relatively healthy, right? So there's nothing really bad with those. It's fruit and it's oatmeal and it's all good stuff, right? However, the issue with it is he's he's eating it at breakfast and it's all carbs. It's all sugar. So what happens when you consume a meal of all carbohydrates? Uh, your what goes up? Your blood sugar goes up, right? So when your blood sugar goes up, what else has to go up? Insulin has to go up, okay? So there's two issues with that. So when insulin goes up, that pulls down your blood sugar, okay? And you end up low blood sugar in a crash, okay? So that snack, that, that second uh, um, um, food interaction of the day ends up being a, a bag of Doritos and you're elbow deep in it and you're not sure why. So um, the crash can cause your brain to tell you to do interesting things like eat Doritos before it's even lunchtime. So, um, and that's your body's way to balance out blood sugar. Okay. The, the second thing that it does is when insulin goes up, it shuts down fat metabolism. Okay. Your body doesn't burn fat well when insulin is high because insulin tells your body to store things. And, um, if you're, uh, if you're doing this challenge, you want to burn fat and build lean tissue. So you want to, you want to burn the fat baby. So, uh, so the alternative here guys, so the, the two issues are you end up in a crash and you crave carbs. And then on top of it, you stop burning fat. So let's do something about that. All right. So I'm going to talk to you about something called carb backloading. So what carb backloading offers is it's, uh, minimizing fruit and starch and your, uh, the carbohydrates that would influence blood sugar. It's limiting those until dinner. Okay, so carb backloading would suggest that you would avoid starch and fruit throughout your day until you hit dinner. Okay, so I know a lot of people will say, hey, wait, I thought I was supposed to eat all my carbs earlier in the day. Uh, you, you can. If you're maybe an athlete, you, you can do that. However, um, we're trying to balance out your blood sugar and help your body burn fat better. It's going to take some, often cases, some extreme things to do that. And carb backloading is not bad. It's not extreme. Anybody can do it. <clears throat> so when you make choices for your nutrition, you're going to, mainly eat protein, fat, and vegetables for breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, and then dinner, you're going to want to have your serving of starch. Now, I'm not talking about going to Olive Garden with a big pile of pasta. Your, your fist is a, is a serving of, of starch. Okay, so that's, when you think about having a serving at dinner, it's, it's the size of your fist. So we're talking rice, pasta, potatoes, and uh, um, things like that. Uh, quinoa would be good. So starchy, uh, a starchy um, choice the size of your fist at night. Uh, so breakfast, for example, would be uh, two to three eggs with uh, uh, some sauteed vegetables. You can also do a greens shake too. So we have lots of greens powders that you can do along with your protein and fat. Um, that's an option. Uh, and then snack would be almonds with a cheese stick. Lunch, you're taking salad, okay, with uh, 
uh, protein and fat on it. So avoid dressing with high fructose corn syrup. Okay. Um, and then uh, afternoon snack, uh, you could do uh, uh, nuts again. Uh, you could do some pumice with some, uh, some vegetables. So connect with your coach. There's lots of options. However, the, the mindset is minimizing and actually um, having zero carbs, meaning uh, starchy uh, vegetables, starchy fruits, and then uh, uh, all starch and fruit until dinner. The other option would be carb cycling. That's for your lean earner type. So if you're a lean earner, meaning your primary focus is to build lean tissue to burn fat on the backside, carb cycling is a great way for you to get that system going. We've talked about carb backlink and carb cycling. Hopefully you guys get a good, uh, uh, at least uh, an idea of what that is. If you want more information on that, reach out to your coach or message me and we'll get you connected. Great tools to help you burn fat and uh, build while, while still building lean tissue. <clears throat> okay, so the next topic is digestive health and absorption. So this is super important because if if you can't properly consume micronutrients, then uh, the point of consuming them is missed. Okay, so if your digestive system isn't delivering to your cells via absorption, then uh, uh, we're missing it. Um, also, with with the macro level, if you um, if your GI system and your your digestive system just isn't working properly, we're not going to get full benefit from the foods you eat as well. So uh, some issues that could contribute to poor digestive health would be certain antibiotics, a lot of antibiotics, and then certain medications. So high stress, uh, poor diet with uh, low fat or high fat, low fiber diets. Um, again, fiber helps the absorption of nutrients, uh, lack of exercise and movement and blood flow poor hydration and just uh, just low on the micronutrients. So as you can see, it can kind of be a double-edged sword um, in, in the situation of trying to get your body to absorb all the nutrients that it needs to, needs to, to make your metabolism run like it should. So uh, this is something to consider. So if you feel you're one of these people that may have some, some uh, issues with digestion or absorption, pay attention because we have solutions. So I'm gonna start with uh, your macros. Um, one of the solutions that, that you may have is just is just uh, practicing a lower carbohydrate diet and uh, tracking on MyFitnessPal. MFP stands for MyFitnessPal. So just tracking on MyFitnessPal, make sure you hit 40, 30, 30. Get a multivitamin slash multimineral supplement. It's a, it's a the simplest thing you can do for your health is literally just take your vitamins every day. So simple. Make sure you get your fatty acids too. So I recommend a, and a supplement for that. Uh, I take a high quality omega-3 fatty acid. Um, we have Corplex and Omegaplex. Corplex is the multi, multi-mineral. And Omegaplex is the um, the fish oil. Uh, so the Corplex, it's a, it's a, it's a fantastic multivitamin. Covers a, a, a lot of different things for you. It has... Uh, there, there's some people that take uh, it as a prenatal because of the folic acid in it is, is enough to, uh, that would qualify for a prenatal. But it has a, a lot of great components to it. The Omegaplex is a high-quality fatty acid supplement because of the, uh, the EPA count in it. So if, if your Omega, look at the back of your Omega fatty acid. If it doesn't tell you how much EPA and DHA it has, I wouldn't take it because chances are it's probably low on the EPA which is the super important pieces of your, uh, of the fatty acids. So, um, your, your cell wall is, is literally made of fatty acids. So if you have poor intake of omega-3 fatty acids, your cell walls could be compromised. If your cell walls are compromised, uh, hydration and nutrients in and out of your cell may be compromised, which if your health, if your, if your cells aren't healthy, that means you're not healthy. Let's just do this. Take a take a multi, take a omega, and call it good. Um, another staple is a probiotic. So taking a probiotic every day is just something simple that you can do for your absorption in, in gut health. So um, uh, here's a here's a ten day cleanse that you could do, and uh, something that's like I said, it's it's kind of the easy button, not simple, but it's an easy button that you could press to make sure that you're getting good uh, uh, function out of your digestive system. So this contains probiotics, 
fiber, digestive enzymes, and cleansing properties. So it comes in two boxes. So the herbal cleanse box that you see there has two different bottles in it. One bottle is your probiotics. Okay. The probiotics are taken 30 minutes before you eat breakfast. Okay. The fiber box is a, there's, there are 10 fiber packets and then you take your fiber packet with breakfast. While you're on the cleanse, you'll do an omega three fatty acid, the omega plex with dinner at night. You'll take the other bottle of the omega plex, or, sorry, of the herbal cleanse and you'll take the herbal cleanse capsules at night. Okay. So this is a kidney liver and intestinal detox and it really does help. So every 90 days you can repeat it. It, uh, it does the body good. So again, it's a very simple thing that you can do every 90 days just to make sure you're getting proper gut health. So choose a goal, you guys. Here's where you're gonna to wanna to write down what you wanna do. So a goal for, of yours, maybe just to track on MyFitnessPal. Maybe that's what you start with. Then the next thing you wanna set yourself for is to hit your macros. Um, low hanging fruit is multivitamin, fish oil. Take multivitamin, fish oil. Uh, 10 day cleanse is uh, a great action for you to, to get better nutrition. Do carb backloading. Okay, so my suggestion would be to uh, track on MyFitnessPal, um, manage your macros, do your 10 day cleanse after the cleanse, start taking a multi and doing carb backloading. Some people may need to just stop eating three and only eat one Snickers a day. Maybe that's where you're at. Everybody's at a different spot, different strokes for different folks. So now we're going to talk about exercise. Exercise is a piece that I feel a lot of people miss on too. I'm not going to lie to you. There's some, there's some opportunities here. So the problems that I see is people having a plan to increase lean body mass, okay? So lean body mass isn't just muscle, it's bone tissue, ligament tissue, tissue, and obviously muscle, okay? So a lot of things goes into uh, your lean body mass. So people mess up their pre- and post-workout nutrition. We're gonna talk about that. And a lot of people are confused with how to burn fat with, uh, with cardio. The first problem we're gonna talk about is muscle development. So this is really important for uh, for, for us and our mission to help people improve their metabolism because uh, our, our brand is built around helping people lose fat, not weight, okay? Uh, now, weight loss disregards this. So if you're doing a weight loss plan, you can shut this off right now. Uh, this, this is what makes us uh, help you burn, burn fat and build lean tissue. Now, uh, your metabolism can go two ways. You can either be anabolic, okay? or catabolic. Those are the two options. Okay. Let me explain the difference between the two. That's a smiley face. That's a frowny face. Okay. So we want smiley face. We want to be anabolic. Okay. So get this for a second. So here's why being catabolic is bad. Here's how it gets bad. So say that you, you go and lift weights, you go to fuse and you just crush your workout. Okay. And you're a little sore. That soreness is micro adhesions in your muscle, little, tiny, 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 tiny adhesions in your muscles, okay? Now, that's a good thing because when you consume calories and protein, your body converts protein to amino acids, which helps your, lean, helps your muscle and your lean tissue heal, right? Now, imagine if you weren't eating enough calories. You go lift weights and you're not eating enough calories for your metabolism, to operate at a baseline. You may have heard this term, basal metabolic rate. If you're not consuming enough calories to hit your, BM, your basal metabolic rate, your BMR, your chances are you're gonna be catabolic. You're gonna be in catabolism, which is not cool, meaning you break tissue down and it's not, it doesn't allow, your body doesn't, doesn't heal it because you're not feeding it enough calories to run at a baseline. It's certainly not gonna help you perform optimally and heal your tissue. So we need to make sure you consume enough calories to be anabolic, okay? So we want smiley face, not frowny face. So hopefully you get that, it's really important. Uh, if you didn't get it, rewind it and listen to it again because it's super important uh, to make sure that you can increase your lean tissue, lean tissue while burning fat. Now, how you build muscle, there's, there's, there's three variables in my opinion. You got form, overload, and intensity. Okay, so number one, you have to have proper form, right? Uh, if you don't have proper form, your the wrong tissue, the wrong um, parts of your body may be stressed, causing overuse injuries, and which may take you out of the game. So, um, so you have to have proper form, okay? 
Um, but you also need to make sure you overload your body. Okay. If you don't overload your body, you, your, your tissues not going to break down and you're not going to give yourself that metabolic benefit from, from uh, weight training. Okay. So overloading is super important. Now, um, the other piece is, is intensity. So there's my form picture. So making, making sure you have proper form, but uh, again, intensity is super important. Okay. So every, every time you, unless you're brand new, okay. If you're new, you want to ease into it. But as you get more conditioned, you literally want to push your body further than you thought you could pretty much every time you work out. Okay. Um, that process happens more efficiently when you're working around other people. If you're working around other people that are trying to do the same thing and you have maybe somebody pushing you like a coach, uh, you're going to see more benefit because you're pushing yourself beyond what you thought you could do. So just think about this for a second. If, if you only did, if you only push yourself as far as you thought you could go, um, you'll, you'll always stay the same. Okay. In order to get change is to push yourself beyond what you thought you could do. And that's how you get growth. So it's really important to put yourself in a situation where you can do that um, and don't be afraid to smile and build muscle. Now, so muscle development equals metabolism. So we can agree that it's important to build lean tissue. So you need to get your caloric need. You need to hit your metabolic minimum to build lean tissue. That's super important and to increase your metabolism. My suggestion is to do full body workouts um, in anywhere from two to four to five times a week. Okay, so full body push, full body pull, weight training. What that means is one day on a Monday, for example, you'll do all push mechanics, push-ups, leg press, uh, tricep extensions, chest presses, shoulder presses, things like that. So all push mechanics one day. The next day you'll do all pull mechanics, which would be uh, lat pull-downs, um, RDLs, deadlifts, leg curls, arm curls, things like that. So you alternate days. So now you're working your full body every time you lift, giving your metabolism the best chance to perform and to, and, to, and to develop. Change up your program. Once you've changed your program, so basically once you've created adaptation, meaning your tissue have broken down and you've increased lean tissue, okay, you're, you've changed, right? So meaning if you, if you want to continue to change, you need to change. So that's why we have Ignite, Burn, Explode. They're all different stimuli, stimuluses on the body. So therefore you continue to get change and you avoid plateau. Okay, so each phase, Ignite, Burn, Explode, they push you, but they push you in a different way. Okay, so change up your program, um, do our free week, so you can see what at least one of those phases is like. Make sure you have a smart post-workout plan, post-workout nutrition plan, and a pre-workout nutrition plan. We're going to talk about that next. All right, guys, now we're ready to talk about pre and post weight training nutrition. Okay, this is mainly for post lifting, not so much post cardio. Uh, post cardio, I suggest eating normal food. And I think after I talk about this, you'll understand why and why it's important to think about having a, a liquid protein slash post-workout shake. So the difference is uh, with, with normal food, food is yummy, food is good. Food is good for you, I recommend it. Um, however, with, with food, like you see here, chicken breast and a uh, salad, yummy. So this is going to have uh, uh, fiber and fat in it, okay? So fiber and fat slows down your digestion of your protein. So your amino acids in your, in, from the protein take longer to break down, whereas uh, when you do liquid, that really breaks down much faster. So you get quicker absorption out of, uh, out of a a liquid style protein, a good one anyway. And so the other thing is, the first thing is, is, is easy digestion of your protein. The second thing is um, most, uh, so, so people need starch too. So after you lift, having starch or some carbs in your, in your shake uh, are important for your body to, to fully digest things, to fully absorb things. So, and there's two different ways to take that. So uh, we're going to first talk about uh, stuck. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to first talk about uh, your pre-workout, and then we'll talk about post-workout. So now there's two types of folks out there that we classify. So you get the lean earner and the fat burner, okay? And now that's important to understand. So the lean earner is somebody that has set up their nutrition and nutri their ex nutrition, exercise, and supplement goals. 
Two, help them uh, build lean mass as the main priority. Okay, so they are building lean mass as the main priority. The fat burner is somebody that has nutrition, exercise, and supplement goals that will help them burn fat as their main priority. Okay, as you get more lean, the objective should go towards building lean mass to uh, burn fat on the back end. So I hope that makes sense. So now if you're a leaner, that's roughly uh, what percentage you want to be at if, if you're going to be trying to build lean mass as a priority. Now uh, for pre-workout, I suggest mass impact, mass impact plus spark for a lean earner. Mass impact is your creatine, amino acids, and spark is going to be uh, giving you some, some caffeine and some B vitamins, help get your body ready for exercise. Spark can be something that you do when you wake up in the morning instead of coffee. It's also great for your pre-workout. Um, so as a fat burner, I suggest uh, two options here. So you get the pre-workout um, from our fit line. That's fantastic. Or um, if you like Spark, you can go Spark plus Catalyst. That's a great pre-workout. Both of these, you do 30 minutes before your workout on an empty stomach. So it's really important you have empty stomach on this so you get full absorption. Um, you don't want to necessarily sip it before your workout. You want it in your belly for sure by the time you start working out, preferably 30 minutes before that's really important. Uh, Post-workout fuel is really important to, to, to have the right plan for this too. So a lean earner is going to go three to one. So that means three carbs to every protein. 30 minutes after you lift. Fat burner is one to one. That's one carb to every protein. And those are two options there. Now the post from our fit line is about half the calories of the meal replacement. They're both a one to one. However, you would use, as a, as a fat burner, you would use post if, for example, you worked out at 5 a.m. and plan to have breakfast shortly after your workout. You would consume the post, it's only 100 calories, after you lift to get quick absorption, and then you, you would have your, your meal about an hour after, after that. Okay, if you're gonna work out at 5 a.m. and you wanna just have a post-workout shake and then on with your day without having to make a meal, then you're gonna do meal replacement. Okay, so the, the meal replacements are fantastic after you lift. They both, they have a one-to-one -one ratio. They got uh, uh, 24 grams of protein in it, and it's a, it's a great post-workout. So um, nine time, mo most times if you, if you go to GNC and just ask for a protein for after you work out, they're going to hand you uh, just a protein powder, whereas uh, if you have protein powder, that's fantastic. Still use it. Use it to fill nutritional gaps throughout your day. Uh, my suggestion would be to, to get – do one of these options for post lifting and then you'll, I think you'll see a lot better results, but uh, continue to use your protein to, to fill nutrition gaps during the day. The third problem is cardio confusion. So cardio confusion is, uh, is an issue because a lot of people don't know the point to cardio. So the point to cardio is to help your body burn fat better as a fuel source. However, you want to teach your body to burn fat at a, even a higher level. Okay. So there's two things. It's, it's, it's burning fat as a fuel source, but, source, but also teaching you about teaching your body to burn fat at a higher level. So we do that through our, our my zone system. So this will help you understand what happens when you do cardio. Uh, when you do cardio, you burn calories, correct? The, the higher your heart rate goes, the more intense you get, the more calories you burn, right? However, as you get more intense, as you get into uh, 80 to 90 to 100% of your max heart rate, you burn more glycogen, okay? Sugar for fuel, carbohydrates for fuel, and you burn less fat, okay? So lower heart rates, you burn a higher percentage of fat calories. However, you don't burn very many calories, okay? So with proper uh, cardio and efficient cardio, we find a happy medium with that. So with, with my zone, it identifies your anaerobic threshold as uh, 80% of your max heart rate. So the formula to find your max heart rate is right there. All right, so you need that formula if you don't have my zone. If you have a my zone, you don't need to remember that. It does that for you. And it puts you in the right zones right away. So my zone is a fantastic way to get a customized program in a split second. It's as a, from a training standpoint, I've been a trainer for 17 years. And this allows me to uh, give you unlimited customized programs, customized workouts for a hundred bucks. It's awesome. So highly consider doing that. Um, oops, missed it. So here's what it looks like. 
got my slide screwed up, but that's your my zone. Um, the my zone in for, for our challenge for hustle of the muscle is important because for every hundred maps, I'll explain maps in a second. For every hundred maps, you get uh, one point. So your team could just rack points by getting your maps. So maps are my zone efficiency points. All right, so I'm gonna back up to this. So my zone efficiency points are points you get being in each zone. So for example, in yellow and red, that's high intensity. You get four points for every minute you're in yellow and red. Green, you get three points for every minute. Blue, two points for every minute. Gray is one point for every minute. However, in our challenge, you don't get points for being in gray. Sorry, folks. You can't just wear your monitor all day long and, and rack points. So you got to have your heart rate elevated. So maps are important. Uh, so let's uh, let's talk about setting a goal. Uh, maybe a goal for you is just learning how to lift. If you need to learn how to lift, I suggest get the trainer. Uh, give uh, give a free week a try at Fuse and work out in a group. It's uh, it's fun to work out in a group. You don't have to take Fuse classes to be part of. Uh, this challenge. However, uh, our, our classes are going to give you cardio and um, strength so you can build lean tissue and burn fat. Now, here's a schedule that I would suggest. So, I would lift Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so you get three days. Okay, so I would recommend a push, pull, push, and just keep alternating that. Cardio Tuesday, Thursday, get a myosome belt, and it'll, it'll tell you exactly what you need to do for cardio on Tuesday and Thursday. It's super, 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 